Uh, so this is pretty much my first TEDx talk. And um, so I'm just going to be talking to you about the way I see pastry. So in perspective, um, the way I see my food. It's not generally uh, people's you know, concepts, different food. My concept is going to be my own. And what I, pretty much what I'm trying to say is um, the way I see my pastry is that it's always derived from other people. When I grew up, I was reading through cookbooks from other chefs from America, from, from London, from Australia, and just deriving those little inspirations from their ideas and turning into something more unique and so, something like my food and my own style. And how I started with that is that I started off young by reading the style from something modern and something from home. And combining the two together, so it's something with uh, modern pastry, and combining it with my childhood. So the way I see pastry, I'm going to break it down to the rawest form, and I'm going to flick through this as fast as possible, and try to scrape through the surface, and just a little, little introductory of um, how it all you know, works. And it's pretty simple and basic. So breaking it down to the senses, you're going to go with taste. And the five basic tastes, you smell, sorry, sweet, salty, bitter, sour, and of course, umami. So these are the basic tastes. And what goes with taste, pretty much 75% to 95% of your taste is actually from smell. So within my desserts, I want something that can be, that is theatrical at the same time. So if you have smoke, it can add a little bit of earthiness to it. It can add a bit of flavor as well. And as well, fragrance, such as something perfumey or something from a flower. This enhances the taste and enhances the way you eat and enhances food as well at the same time. And also, smell can also be sweet. Things can smell like sugar. I go home, I smell like sugar. So, flavor combinations. I like to be inspired by colors. Uh, if you think about it, like colors actually go really similar to together. Uh, greens, you know, have salad and stuff like that. They're all green, they all taste quite the same. If you think about it, strawberry, raspberry, guava, tomato, they all uh, are red. They actually have similar flavor compositions and they go well together. And so, same thing with something that's yellow, green, that's an example. I'm not saying that every color of the same ingredient tastes the same. You know, strawberry and red meat, maybe not. And so, from there, I'm just trying to build up, pretty much trying to show you guys, I'm building up a dish. So, I seek inspiration from other chefs, I seek inspiration from colors, and speak inspiration from, as well, as nature. And the reason why I say nature is because uh, when I look around the streets or I look around, you know, walk around the bushes, maybe the beach, I want something in my food to represent nature in a way and trying to represent the ingredients in its rawest form. So every component of the dish as well should have color, should have texture, but also should always have a purpose. If you put on a flower on a dish, it's just there for garnish, it's just there for a color. Is there really a purpose to it? For example, if I'm going to put mint on a dish, it's not just for the color of green. A lot of people put a lot of you know, greens or chopped up parsley or chopped up greens just for the sake of the color. And it does not add anything to the dish. It adds aesthetics, but maybe not for the taste. So if I add mint to a dish, it adds freshness. So each and every single component of my dish and desserts, I think through it and I try to think about how this will help with my dish to help elevate the flavors. And with textures as well and temperatures, it really affects with the taste. If you're going to have something that's textured, which is going to be something dry and crunchy, it's going to slow down the way you eat because it takes time for you to chew on things to break it down. Something with temperatures, it's going to affect the flavor. Something cold, it's going to numb your tongue and it's going to dilute. And as well, like you won't be able to taste the flavors as much and there's going to be reasons why as well. So moving on, I'm going to be talking about as well modern pasty flavors. So at Koi Dessert Bar, um, I try to combine new ideas uh, from different chefs, and as well, new ideas I'm trying to adapt for my own. For example, if I'm going to have in my dishes herbs, I'm going to have a basil sorbet, or if I'm going to have rosemary sorbet. So not many people would use herbs in their dishes, or even something parsley into something savory, into something that's quite you know, sweet. So have spices, flowers, vegetables, and wood. Now, wood is one of the interesting ones as well that I like to use. Um, for example, you have cherry wood, apple wood, and hickory. People would use those in barbecues and meats to smoke things. But if you look at things in a different way, in a dis different perspective, you can use wood, dry wood, the way you would use as tea. 
So I have an ice cream that I made before. Uh, it's an applewood ice cream. Uh, so what I would do is I toast the wood and then steep it in milk. It has this weird com combination of flavors. It actually reminds me of uh, pulled pill milk tea, now also known as dadari. So, which is really interesting because it's something derived from wood and people would use this sometimes for savory, but it can also be used for sweet. And tea, as well as cheese and fermentation. So fermentation, cheese, it's like these kind of stuff are old stuff. And people these days are trying to use something that's from old and turn to something new. In pastry and cooking, not just in pastry, sorry, uh, in pretty much cooking all around, people are using old techniques and bringing it to something new. And so what I'm trying to do, in my view, in my pastry, is that I'm trying to re reintroduce new things, sorry, old things to something new, and trying to kind of, kind of like not go away from the traditional side of things. So if you're going to ferment things, it's going to add flavor. It's going to produce, preserve uh, some fruits, but that's also going to bring depth to the flavor, acidity, stuff like that. And as well, theatrics. Uh, theatrics can experience, you know, if you go to a restaurant, you go to a modern restaurant, people would kind of pour things in your plate, or they would plate things in front of you, or you have this kind of fog effect. Uh, this will affect the way you eat as well because it kind of shows, you know, it's theatrical. It really interests you. It gauges your, you know, your attention. So I also have nitrogen in my kitchen. It's quite fun. And this kind of affects kind of like a wow factor. Because the first thing you kind of see before you eat is obviously with your eyes. And so I guess now with food, it's becoming more and more extreme. Uh, you want something that's like more of a wow factor, something that's a bit interesting and a bit different and people just pull out the phones, just take photos for it. But with nitrogen and stuff like that, uh, it creates not only just the, you know, the fog effect, but also it creates the flavors, the textures. If I'm gonna have something that's from a foam and you know, freeze it in nitrogen just really quickly, it becomes crunchy, but also the flavor is very different. It's quite cold and it's quite nice as well. And it just adds this little temperature difference from hot and cold. And when you eat something, at least every time you take a bite, it tastes different and it always feels different. As well, what I mean by interactive and hot. Something that's hot, it melts through a chocolate or melt through, you know, or burn something, it changes the flavor. For example, if you're burning something, you're creating a melee reaction, which kind of caramelizes things and adds uh, depth of different flavors. You're caramelizing sugar. And by something that's interactive, um, it's just like waiters. Uh, they go into your dish, uh, they talk about it, where ingredients come from, and ingredients is really important as well quality, seasonality, and as well, you know, the whole inspiration of it. And yeah, so it's, sorry, educational. So pretty much what we just talked about is just play the conversation, building up the dish, ingredients, techniques, and adapting inspiration. And plating, you would probably go from the mousses, crumbles, fruits, and all these stuff when you plate up a dish. So with this, I'm trying to say is it all ends up on you. Uh, what is it that you're looking for? Um, so desserts in particular for me, it is for something that's for a niche market. At the moment, it's for the general public. Uh, what I want to do in my concept of food is that I want it to be seasonal. I want it to be fun. I want it to be playful. I had this little idea in my mind uh, not long ago because I'm trying to come up with a new menu. And uh, one of the ideas I've got is like, Okay, I love uh, you know, using pomade for my hair. I don't know why I was thinking about it, but all of a sudden I was just thinking, one of my pomades, I pull out a can, and it's like it's a little nice looking tin. But to combine it with something playful and with what I do, uh, why not serve something inside that? And in a way, at the same time, when someone pulls out that little tin the lid off, it's literally like gel, or has, but it's flavored and you can eat it. And it's something playful, something that's fun and theatrical. And also it shows a story. Well, sorry, my hair, but yeah. So pretty much, and as well with roots, um, I like to play with my childhood. Uh, so for example, like uh, when I was young, uh, I think I was about six or seven years old, I remember staying in my auntie's place. And um, I'd, you know, I'd be home alone. I'd sneak up, I'd grab the ice cream, and at the very top shelf, there's Kahlua. Uh, I didn't know what that was. I thought it was just like uh, coffee sauce. So I pulled that on my like, uh, ice cream. For those I know what Kahlua is, it's pretty much an alcoholic um, liqueur. Uh, so yeah, I used to pull that on my um, ice cream. So 
I'm going to build a dish around that that you know, revokes my memory and also taps into other people's um, childhood. And so, as well, I'm trying to come up with new dishes. It's a bit difficult because um, I'm someone that's not trained. And some chefs would think I'm a joke, or some chefs would think, you know, kind of down on me, or some would support me. And it's pretty difficult because people have this high expectation of MasterChef, uh, you know, this perception uh, that, you know, I'm someone that's like Heston or someone that's already have, you know, like two, three hats. No, I don't. Uh, I'm not professionally trained. I'm someone that is taking a challenge for myself, trying to be a self taught cook. Uh, but I'm trying to be in this level where I'm going to try and provide for the niche market. Food where it always, it's always evolving. And the way I see food is really different. Um, I want food to be, you know, that represents nature in one way. Or use techniques that no one would ever use. Or flavors that no one would ever use. And as well as interactive. Interactive to evoke people's memories. As well as tap into my childhood. And as well as, um, you know, what is the purpose of my food philosophy? And which is pretty much... I want things to keep moving and be pretty much like a, a never-ending a ball. So always rolling, always coming up with new ideas. And one of the new ideas that I have as well is um, I've got a popcorn dish um, that I want to turn that looks like a giant popcorn. But it will flavor and everything, texture. You know, visually it looks like a popcorn, but when you eat it, it tastes, you know, something that's completely different. I want deception to be in that. And um, I've got years to learn. But hopefully, you know, later on that I'll be able to develop these dishes. And so, pretty much what I'm trying to say as well, uh, ingredient and seasonality always changes, and we'll try to make the best of things. Uh, so if you have fruit in one season, you won't have it in winter. Uh, winter is pretty much where you know, a few nice fruits will be dead. And you know, this is where fermentation will come from, or um, as well as preservation. So you preserve it in a, you know, something that's high in acid, that will survive you throughout the winter. And as well, you can adapt that by putting into new dishes, into you know, dessert that adds acid, but also adds new, like, you know, funky kind of flavors. And it really depends on people and what you do, because I don't know if, if anyone here is a food enthusiast and if you love to cook or not. And um, it pretty much is about what it is you want to do with it. For me, I want to do, like, you know, I want to strive for the best. And I guess for you guys, maybe, you want to cook for your friends, or you want to cook for your family, or cook for as a hobby, and should never stay away from your roots. And um, so, if you're trying to become someone else that you're not, you end up becoming losing away from your own, you know, where you started from, your philosophy in food, your view on food, and your perception of it as well. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. And thanks for having me.